Goku and Gohan aim to improve Super Saiyan 3, and possibly even go beyond it. But they feel like they already reached its limit. What else could they do after this? And more importantly, what's Vegeta up to? No one's seen him in a while and they don't know where he went. But it's not like he's doing nothing. We'll be exploring everyone's training and more in this part 4 of what if Goku and Gohan were trapped. On Earth, by this point, Gohan is purely focused on training. Goku wonders why he isn't doing any of that scholar stuff anymore. And it's not that he doesn't want to do it, it's just that at this point, he kind of really can't. The room of spirit and time stuff messes with his life so much that it's kind of impossible now. He didn't just lose all those years of his childhood, it's also all those years of his education. And yeah, he could be tutored and study outside of that, but still, how the hell is he supposed to catch up to that? In terms of book smarts, he fell behind. And it's not really his fault, but from him falling behind so much, and not even being able to go to a normal school anymore, it kind of holds him back from his dream. But he still has training, and he still does like it. It's not ideal, and he hopes still that someday he could become a scholar. Piccolo and Goku are concerned for Gohan. They've known this for a while, but now they're seeing it more and more. Gohan's dream of becoming a scholar has essentially been crushed, even though he's still trying to work towards it. He and Goku are doing better with the fact that they were trapped in that room for so long, but as I mentioned in the past few parts, Gohan has some long-lasting damage. We'll be seeing more of that going forward too. So while this is happening on Earth, what's happening with Vegeta? We go over to Beerus' planet where Vegeta is training now. More time has passed since the last part, and now, Vegeta has finally unlocked Super Saiyan God. The training with Beerus and Whis was very helpful, and he was able to unlock God Key and then channel it into a form somehow. But it seems that Beerus is actually more happy about this transformation than Vegeta is. Yeah, Vegeta likes it, and he's glad that he's finally surpassed Kakarot and Gohan. But for some reason, he feels unsatisfied. And Beerus asks him what's wrong. He just got the power of a god. He became a deity just now. And look at the power of this form. The two end up fighting in it. And of course, Vegeta's power is no match for Beerus, but it's still impressive. And Beerus is still wondering why Vegeta doesn't seem pleased with it. What, is it because he lost the fight with Beerus? I mean, that's only natural. Of course he wasn't going to win just yet, but he's on the path to it. And Vegeta says it's not that. He can't really put his finger on it, but deep down, he kind of does know what it is. He feels that God Key is a crutch for him. He resents the idea of it. Yeah, he's ahead of Goku and Gohan now. Significantly, actually. But the way he got ahead, he gained access to Godly Key, and it was such a powerful jump that he didn't even expect it either. This new form of Key that they don't even have any knowledge of. It's kind of unfair when he thinks about it. I mean, he's glad that he's stronger, and he's definitely ahead. He knows he's ahead, but he didn't realize how far ahead he'd get. Once again, there's a huge power gap between them, but this time it's in Vegeta's favor, and he feels the other side of it. Being this far ahead is so strange, it's not really that fulfilling, and he doesn't understand why. But the good thing is, Vegeta doesn't need to prove himself anymore. He knows he's ahead, and he's just going to keep training and cement the spot. Hopefully one day, Goku will find a way to catch up, and he knows that's going to happen. Goku's done so before. Even if you disregard those circumstances with the room of spear and time beforehand, he knows Goku will still find some way to grow stronger. Gohan as well, and he wonders what they're up to on Earth. Beerus wants to keep Vegeta here a little longer just to get more practice with his power, and then he could head back there. Goku and Gohan are training one day. They're stumped on how to get beyond Super Saiyan 3. They have the full power version of it. There's no key leak and they could use it at 100% of the power at all times. They made it purely efficient too, just like Super Saiyan Grade 4. And the form is amazing. They're really glad to have it and it's very powerful. It's just, they've had it for so long, and they've never actually gone beyond it. Goku is working on something else though, but it's not something that Gohan could really try for himself. Goku has gone down a different route and started combining Kaioken with it. Of course, he's just in the beginning steps right now, but he feels that maybe, with that excellent control of the full power of Super Saiyan 3, he could probably utilize Kaioken at the same time, which would be a huge boost in power. But it's still a long ways off from being viable, and nothing prompts Goku or Gohan to think of Super Saiyan 4 either. They don't know what's possible, and they don't even think of the Great Ape form. They're just continuing with this power, and the two decide to have an all-out battle. Maybe this will push them beyond their limits. They haven't had an all-out fight with anyone in so long, not even each other. But Goku thinks this will be a good idea. He remembers back in the room of spirit and time, Gohan and there. His anger and a desire for power was how he unlocked Super Saiyan 2 in the first place. But there is kind of an issue with this battle. Collateral damage. They're worried about what it'll do to this planet. Of course, they have key control and all, but that can only go so far. So they can't really go all out and make this a death battle either. Not that they do want to anyways, because they don't want to kill each other. But in their eyes, this will still be a full power battle. The two begin fighting, with Piccolo watching on the sidelines. He wonders if this will actually work for either of them. He feels like they're on the cusp of something else. Well, at least Gohan is. He knows Gohan has more power buried deep within there. He's not too sure about Goku, but Goku will definitely find a way to get that power. As Piccolo's been training with them, he's noticed a few things. Goku always finds a new way to unlock some sort of power. He definitely will find a new level. And as for Gohan, he has those levels buried within him. He doesn't necessarily know how to draw out that power, which was the issue in the Cell Saga until he actually did find a way to do so. And Piccolo thinks this battle would at least be beneficial for Gohan. 
Maybe it will draw out that power, it'll force him to use something else. And for the first time in a while, Goku actually seems to be ahead of Gohan, at least in terms of pure strength. Of course, Kaioken combined with Super Saiyan 3 full power, wow that is a mouthful. It is a little bit strenuous, thankfully Super Saiyan 3 full power on its own isn't too strenuous, but Kaioken, yeah that is. But still, the power boost it gives him is more than enough to actually put him above Gohan. And he used this during the battle, as a way to push Gohan to using more power, seeing if that's possible. Gohan actually requested this too. He wanted to see Goku at his full power, nothing held back. He knows about Super Saiyan 3 Kaioken, or I guess Super Kaioken 3 because they call it Super Kaioken? I, I don't know, whatever. The mouthful names are besides the point. Gohan wanted to see Goku's full power, and Goku obliges. He ends up beating Gohan, seemingly. Gohan gets back up, and Goku thinks he's calling the fight, but Gohan wants to still continue. He tells Goku to continue this fight until one of them is knocked out, and the fight does go on. Gohan gets knocked down again, and again. Goku's losing stamina, but he still is beating Gohan each time. But Gohan gets up again, and is different than the other times. On Beerus' planet, Vegeta's continuing his training, fighting with Whis, and then something stops him. He senses a powerful spike in Ki, far away. Whis wonders why Vegeta's distracted, and then Beerus and Whis both sense it too. It's not too impressive to them, but for Vegeta, it completely stuns him. That power. He knows whose key that is. That's Gohan's. But the strength, he's never sensed anything like this. Well, if he's so interested, Whis will pull it up in his staff, which Vegeta didn't even know was possible. And then they see. Through Whis' staff, Vegeta sees Goku in Super Saiyan 3 with a red aura surrounding him. But there's also an ominous glow in front of Goku, and Goku looks completely stunned. The staff's view then moves over to someone else. It looks like Gohan, but at the same time, it doesn't. He has an aura unlike anything Vegeta's ever seen before. His hair, it's white, and it's much longer than before too. And his eyes, they're an intimidating red color. And as more confirmation that this is Gohan, he then drops out of the form, falling to the ground, dropping to his base form unconscious. What the hell was that? And how could Vegeta sense it all the way over here? Back on Earth, Goku and Piccolo are just as shocked. And Piccolo says that must have been the power that he knew that Gohan had locked away. And Goku still doesn't know what to say. That power? He had that much latent strength? Goku didn't realize that, but for that brief period, he felt the gap between them. It was so large. It made Super Saiyan 3 look like nothing in comparison, but he's happy at the same time. Gohan finally unlocked that power, something beyond Super Saiyan 3. But this fight also showed Goku something. That's not something that he could get, and Piccolo wonders why he's so hasty about it. Maybe that's another Super Saiyan form, but Goku says he doesn't think so. It looks so different, unlike anything he's seen before with Super Saiyan 3, 2, or even 1. And it's just like Piccolo said, this was Gohan's latent power. The energy felt so different than that of a Super Saiyan. Goku doesn't think this is something that he would have. He's just gonna have to go down a different path. Well, Gohan can pursue this form, and Goku gets an idea of where their training can lead them next. Gohan's gonna continue with this form, which, if it isn't clear right now, this is his beast form. Goku does want to continue with Super Kaioken 3, but at the same time he gets another idea. Another power that he could try working towards, one that he actually has some sort of practice with. He consults the Kais. He wants to try learning magic, Maybe with that, he'll be able to draw some sort of weird power out of him that he didn't know he had before, and he's gonna do this immediately. Gohan stays on Earth, training with Piccolo to work on this form more and more, while Goku then goes to the Sacred World of Kai's. They're glad to have him here, and he then hears about Vegeta. Apparently he came here a while ago and now he's gone. Wait, what? This is where he went? Well, that explains why another Kai's here, because apparently he broke the Z-Sword and that dude came out of it. Not that Goku even knew what the Z-Sword was before. So, they tell him about everything that went down. Interesting. So this guy unlocked Vegeta's potential, and then he went to fight some sort of god of destruction or whatever. Well, while Goku's training here, they actually offer to unlock his latent potential. Elder Kai could do that just as easily as he did with Vegeta. But Goku actually turns it down. He doesn't want to be Han of that power, and he thinks that even if he does, he probably won't be at the level of Vegeta's power. He doesn't even know Vegeta's strength right now, he can't sense that god key. But with how long he's been training, especially with someone like Beerus, it definitely seems like Vegeta's gonna be far ahead. And Goku would love to train with Beerus, but it's not gonna be that easy. Beerus isn't really gonna accept Goku at the moment because, well, he's too preoccupied with Vegeta, and Goku's not too impressive in Beerus' eyes. Even if that ultimate ritual is great or whatever, it's not gonna be anything in comparison to getting that god the key, unless you got the two together or something. Instead, Goku's gonna remain with the Kais, training with them. He wants to learn more about magic, just like before. This will lead him down a completely different path, while at the same time, he'll be training more with the Super Kaioken 3, and he's optimistic. He will find something beyond Super Saiyan 3, an evolved version of this form. And while Beerus might not be impressed with Goku, there is someone else he keeps an eye on. After they all sense Gohan's power, Beerus is kind of intrigued, and Vegeta definitely wants to know more as well. Maybe Beerus was wrong about those other two Saiyans. Shin told Beerus that Goku did want to train with him, but Beerus turned it down. 
But until Vegeta told him, Beerus didn't even realize that Saiyan that wanted to train here is the father of that Saiyan they watched through Whis's staff. Although, they theorized the same thing that Goku did. Considering that Gohan's a hybrid Saiyan and has always had this insane potential, whatever power he unlocked probably isn't something that Goku's gonna get anytime soon. But Beerus still keeps this in mind, and Vegeta wants to see this power firsthand. Now that Vegeta's trained more with Super Saiyan God, and has actually done something else different with it, he tells Beerus this would be a great way to test its power. Take him to Earth, let him fight Gohan. And this surprises Beerus. Vegeta thinks that Gohan could match his strength? Well, Vegeta doesn't know for sure, but this might be a good opportunity to test their powers. Well, Beerus allows it, and it'll give him something fun to watch. So, Vegeta does go back to Earth, meeting up with Gohan again, and Gohan's surprised to see him, as well as these two other people with him. He has a lot of explaining to do, so first, Gohan's caught up to speed. So, Vegeta's god now? He doesn't get it. And Vegeta shows off the form. A serene red aura flows around him, as Vegeta transforms into his Super Saiyan god. But Vegeta says this isn't his full strength. He then transforms again, and he looks normal, now with a white aura around him. This is his ultimate form. This form draws out all his latent potential, which includes that power of a Super Saiyan God. So, just by using this form, he could access the power of that form as well. And then some. He wants to fight Gohan utilizing this power, and Gohan obliges. He definitely would love to test out his power too. Ever since Goku left, it's not like he's had an opportunity to fight someone all out again, especially with this new form that he's now getting control over. The two get ready to battle. Gohan powers up, going into his beast form. They're not going to hold back at first. They want to fight at full power right from the get-go. It'll be the only way to truly test their strength. The two power up to their maximum, then launching in towards each other. And at first, it seems like Vegeta's actually ahead. Beerus watches, pretty impressed. Well, Gohan's power is much stronger than they thought, especially for a mortal without any sort of godly key. But as for Vegeta, his power is just as impressive too. He commends Vegeta on using ultimate to draw out the power of a Super Saiyan God. He can't believe he didn't even realize that. The form does draw out all of Vegeta's potential after all, so he might as well use that instead of just transforming into whatever else he has. Since, by default, any other form Vegeta gains will make Ultimate stronger. Something that they're about to see happen again. As the battle continues, Gohan's power continues increasing as well, surprising Vegeta. And Gohan doesn't even know what to think of this. He can't sense Vegeta's power at all. Well, partially he can, but he can tell what he's sensing isn't Vegeta's full power. He's not sensing the godly key. He mainly just feels the pressure of Vegeta's presence. The battle eventually ends with Vegeta winning, or so it seems. Much like the fight with Goku, Gohan gets back up again. He's still ready to fight, and he tells Vegeta, this fight's gonna go till one of them's knocked out. And Vegeta's surprised to hear this, but continues fighting. And Gohan's grown stronger, he's being pushed to that brink again. Not that he's gonna unlock another new form, just that more power is being drawn out of him. His sheer determination and need for power is what's driving him here. And Gohan gets the upper hand. It seems like Vegeta's about to be beaten, but something strange happens with him as well. The aura of his ultimate form, it starts looking more like that of a Super Saiyan God again, and Vegeta feels power coursing throughout him. Both of them are incredibly stubborn, trying to win this fight with whatever power they can, and that draws something else out of Vegeta, that godly aura surrounding him. It then turns blue, with Vegeta's power exploding. There's a brilliant flash of blue light, with Vegeta surrounded by a fierce blue aura. For a brief moment, Gohan sees Vegeta with a new form. It looks like Super Saiyan, but with blue hair instead. All the power is then drawn into Vegeta, and once again, his hair turns black, with that ultimate aura returning. He doesn't know what just happened. Did, did he unlock a new form and just absorb it in his ultimate form as well? What the hell is going on? But whatever this power is, he's going to utilize it to win here. And just like that, he's able to finish the battle, defeating Gohan. That was an amazing test of strength, and it allowed Vegeta to ascend to a new realm of power. But still, to think, Gohan without any godly key, he was able to match Vegeta. And Beerus is definitely intrigued by this. Once Gohan regains consciousness, Beerus has a proposal for him. Come to Beerus' planet, train with them. He can hone that power even further, and possibly unlock something beyond it. And Gohan accepts this. He feels like this is going to be a great opportunity, and it's not like he's doing anything else here on Earth. He could actually go there this time. And it'll be great for him and Vegeta. Vegeta's glad to have a rival. He resented the way he got ahead before, but he sees, even with this crutch of God Key, he still has someone to challenge him. Vegeta's content, but also amazed at Gohan's power. He wonders how strong he could truly get, especially with Godly Key or something like that. All the while, Goku trains away, unaware of this battle. He did sense Gohan's key flare up briefly on Earth, but assumed he was just training with Piccolo or something. He didn't sense Vegeta's power flare up. Goku still is on the Sacred World of Kai's, training on his own, focused on breaking his limits with Super Saiyan 3, and learning more magic. And this training is showing him something, just like he thought. Super Saiyan 3's not his peak. He'll find something new, something beyond either of them. Even if Vegeta's a god now, or Gohan has that beast form, Goku's still confident. Hell, look at what he did before. He perfected Super Saiyan. They found Super Saiyan 2 and 3 together. And now, Goku's gonna go even beyond them. 
this rivalry between the three of them is gonna continue, with each of them, especially Vegeta, more motivated than ever. And Goku's glad about this too. Before he left for the sacred world of Kai's, Gohan seemed much happier, much more content with the position he was in. This is good for him. It's good for the both of them, and Vegeta. This is where we'll leave off for now. What'd you guys think about this part? What's gonna happen next time? And what kind of power is Goku aiming towards? I'll say right now, it's not Super Saiyan 4. Leave any thoughts or suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.